today we're going to be doing a history lesson. Um, we are on lesson number 17, which is motivations for exploration. It is actually like the third lesson in unit two. We've already completed the first unit um, of the history year two course by the good and the beautiful. So I have everything I need. This is the maps and images book that we're gonna be using um, to look at different things to go along with our lesson today. Then we also have our game explorers and settlers, which my kids love this little history game. This is the game that comes with um, year two. And then I have all of their student explorers here um, that they will be doing lesson. The lesson numbers are up at the top and so they're going to be we're on lesson 17 so they're going to be doing lesson 17 um, on their student explorer which just to show you guys right here sometimes they're combined so they're actually working on creating a timeline so they're going to be doing um, that and writing and mapping out different colors of the routes that were taken by the explorers for what we're going to be learning about today so that is basically everything that I need for my history lesson, my course book, the game, the book of maps and images, and then the student explorers. So we're gonna sit down here and we're gonna start our history lesson. I asked you guys on Instagram um, if there was anything that you really wanted me to create, and a bunch of you guys said to do like a flip through of this course because there's not a lot of flip throughs on it. So look for that next month. I forgot that this school year I didn't do flip throughs of all of my curriculum like I usually do. Um, so anyway, I will do that for you guys. Let me know down in the comments if that is something you wanna see because Instagram did basically tell me that they wanted to see that. So we're gonna do lesson number 17 and I will show you guys exactly how we do our history lesson. One of the most common questions I get is, um, if I only had younger kids, would I still do history? The answer is yes. I can do a whole video on why. Um, I wouldn't do this with like a four-year-old, but I would do it with, you know, first grade, second grade. My youngest is in second grade and she joins us for all of these lessons. So we have second grade all the way up to seventh grade and we're using this course and it works for everyone so that's why i love it so much so anyways we're going to sit down and get started on our lesson okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at this painting right here we're going to take turns passing it around so you're going to just silently observe it while i am reading to you guys so make sure you look at it and then pass it to the next person. We're not gonna fight over how long someone's holding it, okay? So, right here. Imagine that you are an explorer and found the land portrayed in that painting, a land that no one knew even existed. Wouldn't it be exciting to explore this place? What lies through the trees and beyond the cliffs? Are there lakes, volcanoes, and crashing waterfalls? Are you on a small island or did you discover an unknown huge continent? Are there people living here? What kind of animals and flowers would you find? Exploring new places can be exciting and interesting, but adventure and curiosity were not the only reasons people in history went exploring. In this lesson, we will study motivations for exploration. So it's, it's kind of easy to think that the whole reason of why all the, all the explorers in history went exploring was because they, they wanted adventure and curiosity, right? That's kind of the way that it makes everyone seem. It makes everybody seem like they were just out looking for adventure and curiosity. Would you guys agree or disagree? Uh, agree. So there's, but that's not the only reason why people went exploring. Well, that's probably one of the reasons. So we're going to learn about some of the other motivations of why people explored new lands where they had never been before. What do you think some of the reasons could possibly be? New trading routes. To trade stuff. That might be why. Finding new lands. Because they wanted to find new lands. Yeah. What else do you um, guys think? The pilgrims, the pilgrims to worship what they wanted. 
freedom for religion. Yeah. What do you think, Caleb? What are some other there? We haven't really looked and seen what the motivations were. So there's really no wrong or right answers. Uh, it's just, what do you think? Settle in like different places. To move their families. I think all of those can be likely possibilities. So the world in 1491 seemed very different from the way we see it now. The people of Europe thought they knew what the earth was and where all the parts of it were, but they were wrong. So look at this map right here on this page, which shows the world as Europeans understood it in the mid 1400s. 1400. They did not know about North America or South America. What continent do we live on, Olivia? Um. You don't know what continent we live on? There's seven of them, remember? Oh, yes. What's ours? South America? No. Oh, North America. North America. So they didn't even know that that land was there at all. They did not know how far South Africa extended. It would be many years until places like Australia and Antarctica were even discovered. So they just thought that this was all that there was. Well, Looking at the years, did he go before them or after them? Before. Before. Yeah. So sometimes it takes someone going somewhere first and then people, then other people are more willing to go try to discover things as well. Because if you notice, didn't the, didn't their routes go farther and farther each time? Yeah. yeah. Because the red one is Bartolomeu Diaz and he went after Henry the Navigator and he went a little bit farther, as you can see from the red. But who went the farthest? Vasco. Vasco da Gama, but he also went last. Yeah, that's because they started building up courage as they went. Yeah, because it wasn't completely unknown anymore. So Bartolomeu Diaz was a Portuguese explorer. In 1488, about the time of Christopher Columbus began asking for ships to sail west to China, Bartolomeu Diaz took a ship around the Cape of Good Hope at the southern edge of Africa. He saw that the coast stretched away to the northeast with a huge body of water to the east of it. He found, he had found the Indian Ocean. So they had no idea. See, because he came from here and he went down here and then he realized that that, that was the Indian Ocean, which had never been done before. So Vasco da Gama came 10 years later and he made the voyage around Africa and crossed the, the, into the Indian Ocean and India itself because India is over here. This opened up a new trade route and made the Portuguese very wealthy. Exploration soon to, began to occur all over the globe. Explorers were motivated by the promise of riches, the thrill of sighting new lands and meeting new people, and the chance to spread Christianity to millions of potential converts who knew nothing about Christ. The dangers of travel were worth the risk. Something, if you look closely, right, uh... Right here, it looks like a dragon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. Oh, yes, I see it. Okay, so we're gonna look at a painting right here. That is called The Departure of Vasco da Gama to India. So here is the painting, you guys. I just wanna show them. Um, it's a painting by Roque Gamiro in that is, here, take a look at it. That is what he painted the departure, departure of Vasco da Gama to India to be like. So what things do you guys notice about that painting? Um, it looks like the Mayflower. Similar. Yeah, I thought it, that it was that. Um, there's big flags. Yeah, big sails. So they had big sails on the boats. Big tent, nights. It was like a whole thing. And a bunch of people can't see. Yeah, a ton of people. So it's probably a pretty big deal. Um, right there, is that Marco Polo or something? No, I think it's the prince. Can you even ask? 
side. Yeah, that's why I said it looks like the Mayflower. So what you guys are gonna do now is open up your student explorers yeah. onto lesson number 17. I think we saved lesson 16 to do today as well because yeah. last time. So on your timeline, turn it, turn it to the side. So do lesson 16 first, which it tells you at the top what you need what you need to do in there because this is continuing on with the timeline so lesson 16 is marco polo explores asia with his father and uncle and writes about, writes about his travels so on on the one for lesson 16 we need to write that which i believe is this one and then on lesson 17 we need to write portuguese explorations around africa and then we need to um go over those trade routes with color Actually, okay well i'm reading upside down so if you can see which one it needs to do so look at the top of your page livy and on lesson 16 it'll tell you what you need to write down for that one because that was the one when we talked about marco polo do you remember that one yeah yeah uh And do you guys remember why everyone remembered Marco Polo? What did he do differently? He uh, wrote a book. He so wrote well, books and he traveled more often than other people. Yeah, he wrote about his journey, which is why he's more famous than, than the other people. Because did he go by himself? No. No. And 600 years later, it's still a bestseller. Okay, so if you guys are done with your student explorers, then you can go ahead and close close them and then put your pencil in the center or in the jar. And then we're gonna slide those down towards the end of the table so that we can set up the explorers and settlers game. Don't bump into Olivia, she's still writing. You and me tied. So this is very easy to follow because it, you know, it shows you exactly what you're supposed to do next and then play explorers and settlers and then the unit to read aloud. Um, and then that is the completion of one lesson. So we're gonna set up explorers and settlers. Um, if you have a group of highly competitive children, then I recommend that you play it the way that we do, which is we just play to, for the time frame, the, the instruction on the card says play for 20 minutes or until someone has won. So we just play for 20 minutes because we don't do winning in our house because it's a nightmare. And that's just me being honest. So uh, we don't play games for winning, but these are really great for just memorizing certain explorers and certain settlers that are really important in history. So we're gonna set up our game now and then that'll be the last thing we do for our history lesson today. So every time we learn about a new explorer or settler, then you're going to have that knowledge of knowing. Vasco da Gama. The Gama. So we need to a drawer. Baby Palm. Pomp. Pomp. Not Pomp. I remember by Pom Pom. Pom Pom. Is that the name of her baby? Pom. Yeah. yeah. Pom. So, so, so. How'd you guys learn that? Uh, who was yeah. show? Who was show on Netflix? Mm -hmm. Who is soon going to be getting rid of? Because the Disney thing. Which is Ooh. probably only way more better. And I still get to watch Sophia. Yeah, so that is Disney. Sophia, Sophia. Back in the That's the best of you. Now you guys know yeah. who Leif Erikson was. Yeah. yeah. 
What is that? There it goes. I knew him. We've laid out all of our explorers and settlers face up. And then these are the cards that have the clues of who they each are. And so when it's their turn, they read the clue and then they choose the correct explorer or settler. And if they get it right, then they get to go again until they're stumped. And if they get where they can't figure it out, then they pass the clue to the next person. Um, and so you kind of use like a process of elimination to, until you know exactly who all of these people are, which I am fairly confident that most adults would not even know who all of these people are. And I speak for myself because I did not care about history in public school. It was very boring. And so I just think if I would have been taught using this type of curriculum and these type of lessons, I probably would have retained much more than um, just a chalkboard and someone telling me things that I should care about that I never really just did. It's so. a lot more fun because you actually interact and do things. Rather than just like take notes and then take a test and then leave. Right. Yeah. 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 Like you're doing a game. Right, so <laughs> let's mix these up. Four for you. Four for you. Ooh. Ooh. Four for you. And 12 for me. Four for you. Thank you. Oops, I mean. And four for me. <gasps> You're blind too? Yep. Sweet. Okay. Oh, Ooh, I got one. I know. Uh, Caleb, go first. Do No, you don't get to choose. You take your top card. Um, this group wanted to reform. Landon, the don't set them up in a England, cheating fashion. But they were not allowed to worship as they believed. John Winthrop led them to form the Massachusetts Bay Colony in the city of Boston. Um, so they could not worship as they believed. The Puritans. What card number is that? 14. Correct, the Puritans. Ding, 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 ding. So now you're gonna go again, top card. These people called separatists sailed to North America on the Mayflower and founded Plymouth Colony in what is now Massachusetts. They instituted the first government of the people called the Mayflower Compact. Who was that? Christoph. What card number? Wait, no, actually, I think it's John Smith. Is it John Smith? This is um, 13. I think it's no. a bunch of people. No, pass it to Landon. It, you have the to, pilgrims. The pilgrims, because oh. it said these people, so that means more than one person. Um, this French Read it about. clearly. This French explorer found a new plant in Quebec City. Quebec City. And what became Kennedy? He is known as the father of New France. Um, French dude. Can I look at him? You are looking at him. <laughs> Not Marco Polo. It's not gonna be him. Not him. Quebec is in Canada. Yeah. Um, so cold. that's why the, a lot of people in Canada speak French. No, that's not. That's not. That's not. Bonjour. Oui. Oui. What is a French name? Jean Cabot, is it? Okay, Landon, you gotta make a choice. And no, I'm looking for French names because I can. Because this is French. So is that who you want to go with? Um, yes. What card number is that? Eleven. Yes, Samuel de Chaplin. Ding, 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 ding. See, I I know his name. Okay, next one. Um, this off. man explored the North American coast, finding and sailing up a major river later, and after him, Dutch and English sailors came to the area discovered by the six explorer Henry Hudson. What card number is that? Nine. Good. How do you know it was Henry Hudson? The because Hudson he was the Hudson River. Okay. She was a Powhatan Indian who, as a young girl, girl befriended John Smith and the Jamestown settlers. She later converted to Christianity, married an Englishman named John Wolfe, and traveled to England. That would be um, Pocahontas. What card number? Ten. Good. I got this. Can Last one? Um, a British explorer and map maker. He made discoveries throughout the Pacific Ocean. Landon. Landon. Okay. 
a British explorer and map maker, he made discoveries throughout the Pacific Ocean, including Australia, the Hawaiian Islands, and New Zealand. Him? What what card number? Six. Yes, James Cook. That's because we Good. Like just so now I'll give Landon my cards. We're going to go on to let Olivia have a turn. Okay, Liv, your turn. Read your card. These two friends were chosen by President Thomas Jefferson to explore and map the... In map the interior of the United States. They traveled all the way to the... Pacific Ocean. So two explorers. Who are they? Lewis tell me what their names are. Lewis and Clark. Olivia, tell me what their names are. Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark. Good. Do your next card. Italian. Italian. Italian explorer. Explorer who, who with his son Sebastian was. Sebastian. <laughs> but, <laughs> Sorry, Commissioned. Commissioned to explore in North American coast. Who was that? An Italian explorer. So probably a Marco Polo. What card number is that on the top? Eight. No. And they traveled with his father and his uncle. So okay. So who do you think that is? So everybody has their cards, so let's return them back, make a neat stack and put them back in the tin. Stack them all up first. And I know I'm going to get questions about the read aloud, so I like to alternate one historical read aloud with one fun read aloud. So we're actually not reading a um, read aloud for history currently because we are reading the Swiss Family Robinson. So um, that's just the way that I like to do it because... Otherwise, it's just, we start to lose interest. So, um, my kids though, each of them, their, um, their readers for uh, just their individual reading time correlate with our history. So they're getting some historical fiction that way as well. So that is gonna conclude our history lesson for today. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing it. I hope it helped you. If you have any questions or you wanna see that history year two flip through, post them down in the description box. But until next time guys, we'll see you in our next video really soon. Bye guys! Bye -bye. We got time.